we work on energy. Hydrogen is one way. But energy, it's linked with climate change. And the most problematic issue that human has ever faced until now, throughout the prosperity, is the climate change. The melting of glaciers and boiling temperatures of the earth is a problem. And what we realized, that is human-made. That's our greediness for prosperity. That's the greediness of industrial development for developing products. We consume lots or lots of energy. And the most importantly, we use so much of fossil fuels. Now the world has decided to migrate from fossil fuels to renewables and to cut down the emissions. So this is the greatest decision. Collectively, the people around the world, the governments and politicians have decided to bring down these carbon emissions, which has been released throughout the centuries for the prosperity and industrial development, and neck it down to zero. So 300 years of infrastructures, 300 years of pollutions and, and fossil fuels getting down to zero by 2050 is the biggest decision a human mind has made collectively. We are part of it. Our prime minister and our government is part of it. But when we look back, how those emissions are coming up, why are we hitting up this world, the earth, the place where we live? It's for energy. So 73%, more than that, is coming from energy, all the emissions. And if you break down it further, it's for the industries and it's for transport. It's for iron and steel production, it's for road transport, and it's for cement and chemicals. So before we think how to bring down the net zero carbon goals into action, the world needs solutions to block these emissions from these sources. And if you go back, how do this energy is provided to us? Again, if you look, it's oil, it's coal, it's natural gases. More than 80%, my friends, today, more than 80% of energy that we use are fossil fuels globally. And they are contributing to the environmental disasters that we have already faced. So what's the direction? How should we come above emissions? We don't want to stop development, never. It is not the pathway. We want to have more developments, but not in, in, in the cost of emissions. That is inviting transitions of energy that we use from fossil fuels to renewables. That's the direction. So everybody is focusing, every country is focusing, how can we transit from fossil fuels to renewables? Do we have sufficient amount of energy? That's the first question. Yes. Just solar energy is more than what we need. So this tiny, small block, brown block, is the total energy that we consume. And that yellow block is the solar energy that we can use. So the question here, it's not about do we have alternatives. The question here is how can we bring this alternative for our applications? Of course, it's uh, research, innovations, and applications. If you look, the world have already adopted this solar energy. The price of solar energy falling down is something a human have witnessed in a such a large scale. And adoption of solar energy is another thing. But will that help? Will solar energy alone can go into the cement industries? Can it go and replace coal? Can it go and drive heavy trippers? Can it fly airplanes? Can it drive ships? These are large questions. It's not about having solar, wind, hydro, and different renewable energy. How can we bring those energy into our systems, into our daily life? So we need a driver, we need a carrier, and we need a method to bring all these wonderful renewable energies into practice. And that's where hydrogen has evolved. This has shown a big picture, breaking down water, producing hydrogen, and putting it into the center of the energy systems. Producing electricity, driving cars, synthetic fuels, ammonia, fertilizer, metal refinery, heating, anything we imagine can be potentially contributed by hydrogen. 
and that hydrogen being produced by renewables, solar, wind, hydro, geothermals, and way beyond can decarbonize economy. That's where we have arrived collectively, globally, and symptoms have already come up. Scientists and researchers around the world, together with the industries, together with the politicians, have shown, yes, hydrogen can decarbonize transport, hydrogen can decarbonize cement industries, steel industries, it can propel airplanes, it can roll down the railways, and what not. But are we there yet? How can we be there yet? And that needs a strong political and policy drive. And yet it's happening around the world. Lots of countries have already understood how we can decarbonize our economy through hydrogen. And the special roadmap for each country has been made. Like UK have already announced by 2024, UK will not use coal anymore. Norway will not permit shells of any new cars driven by petrol and diesel. Even the country like Sri Lanka is the youngest country to have a national hydrogen roadmap just before a couple of weeks before. So on this picture, now the scenario of fossil fuels are changing. The oil producing countries are looking for how can their business be diverted. The countries like Saudi Arabia, Oman and United Arab Emirates, who are the major producer of oil and fossil fuels right now, are looking on the new business. They are trying, look at my friends, 30 gigawatts of solar energy, 25 gigawatts of solar energy, just to produce hydrogen, convert it into ammonia, and distribute around the world, and come out of the fossil fuels. That's happening, just in our own continent. And India has already, India is one of the largest consumer of fossil fuels. 160 billion dollars annually spent on import of fossil fuels and they want to convert it they want energy independence the prime minister himself has launched what they call national hydrogen mission for energy independence in india if energy is independent in india 160 billion dollars will be saved every year and the emissions can save lives of people giving them three years additional life, just with improved air quality. But in the year 2035, when the world needs hydrogen at its height, 15, up to $15 trillion market is projected by 2050, Nepal has been listed as the country which can produce the cheapest hydrogen in the world. It's not solar. Solar has 50% capacity factor. Hydro, 100%. Arabs, they need to filter water from the oceans to produce hydrogen. Nepal has glacier melted water. So this is something that world have realized and we are aid to wake up and to see what we have in our side. Then comes what and how can we build further. Nepal being the hydro rich country, so many data are there and we have already started to spill electricity, 3500 megawatts is on the table which we don't know what to do if the export doesn't work as we want to. On the other hand, just 4% of electricity is the primary energy supply in our system. 96% of energy in Nepal are non-electricity based and coal, the world is getting away from the coal. Coal is increasing from 7, 8 to 9%. Fossil fuels has dominated up to 30%. So there is a need, there is a challenge, there is an opportunity to replace what we don't have, the fossil fuels, with what we have, renewables, hydro, solar, and achieve energy independence. So many good numbers are there, which I don't want to speak right now. This is where Kathmandu University have started our, our goal. The first agreement was signed with Nepal Oil Corporation to transit Nepal Oil Corporation from an oil business company to clean energy business company. And this is, my friend, the first hydrogen refilling station that will be installed inside Kathmandu University and developed by the researchers of Green Hydrogen Lab for our country. So this is on the procurement, and we hope this will change the landscape. Even the Prime Minister have announced he wants to drive hydrogen car. Probably this could be the first hydrogen car in Nepal. Thanks to Nepal Oil Corporation for being pushing us and pushing themselves to transit in this direction. <laughs> ammonia 
Ammonia will be the single fuel in future that will replace diesel and fossil fuels on marine sectors. The world is looking on ammonia. Ammonia is developed from hydrogen and nitrogen from air. So this is something we want to see Nepal as a future fuel exporting nation. And Nepal Electricity Authority, who knows how vulnerable is the electricity market. If we are not able to sell our electricity, the country and the investment will be ruined. So we've got to manage to convince Nepal Oil Corporation to start the first pilot project of green ammonia production as a better management of hydropower electricity in Nepal and to look and to plan and to project Nepal as a fuel exporting country. And my sign an MOU and Nepal Electricity Authority is on the way to establish its first green ammonia production facilities in Nepal together with Kathmandu University as a knowledge partner. Clean heat. The world is needing clean fuel for heating applications. And Russia and Europe war has given a very, very good lessons. I will not go into the technique, but at the, our university, we are trying to develop green hydrogen as a fuel source for our country. 40 billion rupees is spent on import of coal, and 60 billion rupees are spent on import of LPG just to produce heat for our country kitchen and for our industry. Yes, hydrogen can be the source. And this is the stove that we have tested together with the different partners from Switzerland and the UK. In our university, we have cooked noodles just to show that this is possible. And we are working on what is the future fuel for the industry the world is looking at, which is called green methane or synthetic natural gas. So this again has been designed by our own researchers and now it's in the lab, we can produce green fuel as a demonstration and we want to see this as an industrial fuel alternatives replacing coal, diesel and other boiler fired fossil fuels in industries of Nepal. That's where we are trying to contribute to the nation's energy transition. Hydrogen and steel industry. Steel industry is the future. It's the second largest import we do for our nation. Almost 1.5 million Tons of steels are imported every year, and we have found the resources in our country, but we don't know how to process it. Do we want to go through the classical way of pro processing it from the fossil fuels? No, we don't want to do it. Now, hydrogen can do it, like the rest of the world are transiting towards the steel production. We want Nepalese mining industries to go through green hydrogen production, create employment, utilize our own resources, and Kathmandu University have again participated with the uh, Department of Mines and Geology of Government of Nepal for groundbreaking research on mining engineering, from academics to research to exploration and industrial development. That's what we want to use our knowledge. That's where we want our students, our youths, to contribute to such kind of innovations and such kind of industrial developments, like our speaker was saying, we can do something different, something very different in our country with this project. Finally, Nepal has way beyond hydropower resources. And we have uh, variations on our production. Our variations is on summer season to winter season, from daily to weekly variations are quite high. So we need energy storage. On the wet season, when we don't have proper market of our electricity, we can bring it to the dry season by storage. And hydrogen has been on the top notch of energy storage systems globally. And the country like United States is eyeing on hydrogen as an energy storage. Solar, whenever it produces electricity, store it at hydrogen. Wind, when it produces electricity, store it at hydrogen and convert it into whatever we need as an energy, as an intermediate product, or export commodities from this, what they call as hydrogen hubs. So we hope one day, maybe you can contribute to development of hydrogen hubs in Nepal, where we can brand some hydropower projects together on a one hydrogen hub which can store all the spill energy, all the unutilized energy in one particular site and have an industrial development around it and export hydrogen in future. So that's something we want a next generation to look at and carry it further. And one day, one day, we really want Nepal to be a fuel exporting country. It has power, it has capacity, it has resources, it has human minds that can make it happen. Of course, we need political decisions, very complicated geopolitical relations for this to happen. But if we can bring our hydrogen and hydrogen derivatives to Bay of Bengal, 
then the world is open to us. We can reach to Korea and Japan. This is the export of our hydropower beyond Asia. And we can reach all over the world. And this is something that can make Nepal today from what we are, like Saudi Arabs and, and OPEC, what they are. That I want to transfer to our students, to our researchers, to our politicians and to our industries to make Nepal an economic con prosperous country and a happy country because I believe the only place in the world to be happy for a Nepali is Nepal and we can make it happen. And I want to see that happening before I retire from Kathmandu University. I have 15 more years to work together with my students, with my faculties, with my mentors to see this and make this happen. Thank you so much.